Now it's my great pleasure to, uh, to, uh, to invite Professor Tanya Milenkovic. She will speak about carb uh, counting and also dosage adjustment. You know that a lot about it. I mentioned to, uh, to Professor Milenkovic that uh, you, are, uh, you are pretty aware. We have two clinical dietitians here. They were here and there, here and here, and some were, some were there. No, just for you. So you are here, so you will help Professor Milenkovic. Professor Milenkovic is uh, uh, one of the most important people in this part, of, uh, in, uh, in eastern part of the Europe, uh, in our neighboring country in Macedonia, but also uh, she is uh, very well known in the field of uh, diabetes education. So, Professor Milenkovic, please. Thank you, Mikhail. So, thank you so much uh, for the invitation. And I know that you know even better than I do how to count the carbohydrates. So I will briefly say something about that. And now, and then I would like some interaction or we will count together to be more interesting for you. Because I, I suppose that you know the most of that, that you will hear, hear just now. So this is the general that uh, the needs of people with diabetes regarding food are the same like the rest of the population, and these uh, are the six, ma uh, six main uh, nutrients that we all need, like carbohydrates, fats, protein, vitamins, minerals, and water, of course. But for, for you, it is the, the most important thing, or uh, nutrients are carbohydrates, and that's why you should know, and I'm sure that you already know, uh, how you, you can count those carbohydrates. Uh, that you are uh, having with your food. So there is a basic or simple er and advanced carbohydrate counting. And of course, in order to know advanced, you should know the simple carbohydrate counting, which is very system, very simple system of carbohydrate exchanging. And like uh, one carbohydrate exchange uh, contains 12 to 15 grams of carbohydrates, like one piece of bread, 25 or 30 grams and this is a very uh, simple that if you have one serving for bread or starch or one serving carbohydrate from fruit or one from milk group it will contain the same 12 to 15 grams of carbohydrates and of course regarding veg vegetables there is no carbohydrate need to count if the quantity of vegetables is less than 200 grams in, in your meal. So you know all this? Yes? All of you? Very nice. Then uh, you know also this, that what are the, our needs or your needs for carbohydrates? For most of the women, three to four choices per meal, or this is 45 to 60 grams. And for, or for men, four to five cho choices, or 60 to 75 grams per meal. Or oh, this is very simple, um, how we are teaching the people with type 2 diabetes, how to exchange the different kind of food which contains the same quantity of carbohydrates. But what is important for you especially, it is advanced carbohydrate counting, or how you can measure the carbohydrates in your meal, and of course how to, to adjust the insulin according to those measures, I mean of quantity of carbohydrate, but as well as the level of your blood glucose and how you can adjust all this with, uh, in a very, I mean, precise manner. Uh, and do you know this rule? I'm sure you do, yes, the rule of 500 and how to know your insulin to carbohydrate ratio, very simple, if you split 500 with your total daily dose and we will get the a quantity of carbohydrate that can be covered with one unit of fast of, of uh, uh, rapid insulin. This is example. So very simple. If we split 500 with 36, if this is your total daily dose, we will get that number 14, which means that you will cover 14 grams or one carbohydrate exchange with one insulin unit. This is well known for you, I'm sure. Sorry, may I, may I kindly ask you, uh, how many of you do like that? Because uh, not so many. 
because okay. the insulin pumps are, are, are doing exactly on this way. They are calculating uh, insulin to car carbohydrate ratio and the second, this is this, insulin sensitivity factor, which is again very simple rule of 1,500 for those who are a little bit more insulin resistant and 1,800 for these who are a little bit more insulin sensitive. And again, it is very, very easy. If your total daily dose is 34, you simply divide 1,800 with 34 and you will get one number, it is 53 which means that one unit of insulin will lower your blood glucose for 53 milligram per deciliters e, or if you split this with 18 then you will get the number in millimoles per liter which means it is three that one unit of insulin will lower your blood glucose for three millimoles per liter do you know this all of you all of you no, all of you. So this is very important. And I will show the, another example how you can use this in order to, to know how many units you need to cover the food that you are eating and plus how many units you need to correct the higher blood glucose level to desired blood glucose level after your meal. So this is working very well uh, if you are on, on basal bolus and of course the insulin pump, this program that you have bolus visar, you, you are aware of that, he suggests you the dose according to this calculation. And this for the first time introduced uh, in DCCT trials, trial, uh, it, it was shown that it's very efficient way how you can adjust adjust your blood glucose according to this very simple, simple rule. So I have this example for you. So for instance, if your pre-meal blood glucose level is, for instance, 14.5 millimoles per liter, and you want it or your targeted level is to be 5.5, so you need to reduce for nine millimoles per liter. How you will do that? If you know that your insulin sensitivity factor is 3 millimoles per liter, so you will need 3 insulin units in order to lower your blood glucose level for 9 millimoles per liter and to achieve your, your desired level. Is this clear? Please ask me if I'm not... It's clear. Okay. And now another example how you will calculate the required dose for specific meal and how you can ma make another adjustment if your blood glucose is higher than it you want it to be. So first, you can estimate it, the level of carbohydrate in, in your meal. And for instance, it is uh, 60 grams of carbohydrates. And if your insulin to carbohydrate uh, ratio is 1 to 15, then you need 4 units in order to cover these 60 grams of carbohydrates. And if your pre-meal blood glucose level is around 14.5 and you, will, you want to be 5.5 at the next meal, so you want to reduce your blood, level, blood glucose level for 9 millimoles per liter, so, and your insulin to sensitivity factor is 3 millimole per liter, so you need 3 units. And you, if you uh, need 4 to cover carbohydrates and 3 to make adjustment to your blood glucose level, so you should have 7 units for this meal in order to cover carbohydrates and to reach the level of postprandial glucose that you want. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. And this is the way how the pumps are doing and this is the way how you, you will calculate if you are on basal bolus and that's why we want you to measure your blood glucose uh, before each meal because you need to do this which is not 
uh, not hard. All of you know your average total daily dose. I know that it is flexible, but average total daily dose. You will need to make this cal calculation always, all, only once, to know your insulin to carbohydrate ratio and also your insulin sensitivity factor. And after that, it is matter of calculation is not is not so hard. So. I would like to, to now to have interaction with you because I know that this well, most of you know this. Uh, do you know, of course, uh, which of these food contains carbs? The first one, pasta. Yes. Yes. The second, cookies. Yes. Pom fries. Yes. yes. Meat. No. Exactly. Apple. Yes. The salad. Yes. No. If it is. If it is small than 200 grams, there is no. Milk, yes. Grapes, of course. The broccoli, no. If it is below 200, but if it is more than 200, there, there is one carbohydrate exchange. Okay? But no, if it, if it is in those quantity. Corn, of course. And, and grapefruit, yes, of course. And then, what do you think? Oh, sorry. Uh, I show you this, but I will not hurry with the second one. Uh, which will have a greater effect on your blood sugar? One teaspoon of sugar or <coughs> potatoes? <coughs> one teaspoon contains just four grams of carbohydrates. And potatoes or small apple, it contains how, how much grams of carbohydrates? 15. It is one carbohydrate exchange. Then, which has the highest carbohydrate content? One teaspoon of sugar or one teaspoon of honey? Excellent, the same. Then, which has the highest carbohydrate content? One small lemon or one small sweet orange? He said the same. Are you agree? All of you? <coughs> exactly the same. In the citric fruits, the same quantity, the same carbohydrate content. Which has the highest carbohydrate? Next time we will have a lottery, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Who will win? One small banana or one slice of wholemeal bread? One small banana or half banana. How many carbohydrates in there? 15. It is one carbohydrate exchange. One small banana. And one slice of wholemeal bread? But it's the same. So one carbohydrate exchange. What is? They all have different glycemic index. That's that's correct. But for the insulin, it's not so important the insulin index, but the total quantity, because the grapes or or uh, I mean the fruits they have very high <coughs> glycemic index. But the total quantity of carbohydrates is like this. It is better to have, because the banana has a lot of starch in it, not just a, not just a carb, uh, fast carbs. So it is a good choice. But if it, if it is not bigger than, I mean, half. I think it is important for the glycemic index. Because it is something that happens. Can we have a microphone, please? More than five grams of fiber, you need to rest it because it would not be absorbed the same one banana at, uh, compared to a wholemeal bread, a real wholemeal bread, because most of them are not real ones. They have low, yes, just, uh, low fiber content. But if it has more than five grams of fiber, you need to consider it to the insulin. It will not be the same effect. No, uh, we are not talking about the effect on your blood sugar. It will be a different effect. But yeah, the, the amount quantity of insulin. So yes, the quantity of carbohydrates is the same, so the need for insulin is the same. Only the, the moment when the blood sugar will be higher is, of course, with the 
carbs with high glycemic index. I totally agree, it's, it's okay. So next, what which the highest content? One glass of fringe, fresh orange juice or one glass of lemonade? How many, how many, how many uh, uh, oranges do you need to make uh, one glass? Of course. So how many carbohydrates will, will have this? 36, exactly. And what about lemonade? <laughs> of course it will be the same, because as we said, it is the same quantity in both. Uh, which has the highest carbohydrate? One grapefruit or one apple? How many are in one grapefruit? In one grapefruit, there are the two carbohydrate exchanges, so it, it will be 24, and in one apple, it will be 12 grams. And the 100 whole grain rice or white rice content, of course. This is important to know, the content is the same, but the better choice is whole grain rice because of glycemic index and the time how it will raise your blood sugar. One can of diet soda or 100 uh, meat? There is no carbs in meat. You can count if there is more than 200 grams and afterward that they will change into carbohydrates later on. But then, and uh, there is no carbs in meat. It is just in your body is turned in, in, in carbohydrates. One teaspoon fructose sweetener, how, how many carbs in there? Or teaspoon of sorbitol? Fructose, do you know? One? Yes, it is four. Four? There is zero. One scoop of ice cream or ten? Grapes, I mean, one scoop of ice cream, there is eight grams. In 10 grapes, no way. there is 12. <laughs> yes, yes, the most of it is. Uh, yes, but still in one. <laughs> no, it's not a ju uh, just, it's not ice water. It's not, it's uh, ice cream, you know. It is one, one small scoop have more carbohydrates than you have in 10 grapes. A little bit more. And these plates, this will, we will finish with a couple of uh, plates. Uh, how we can count carbs in one meal? For instance, in one cup of milk, how many carbs there are? That it's uh, usually 12. Then in 100 grams of pork, Zero. In half large corn? How many? Fifteen? And in 200 grams of broccoli? No zero. There are 200. So you, you should count this as a one carbohydrate exchange. So, and one or oh, half cup sugar free apple sauce. Sugar free, but made by. Apple, it's 15. So this meal contains how many? One, two, three, four, four carbohydrate exchanges or 57 grams of carbs. It's a different, is there an alcohol in wine? Uh, I mean carbohydrates in wine. What do you think? In Let me tell, is there any, any, any carbohydrates in alcohol? No, no, just in beer and in sweet wines where it extra added sugar because in, there is no, no sugar, no sugar in alcohol. There is a alcohol units, it is other things, it is a how many grams of alcohol will, uh, will, I mean, uh, dissolve in your, in your um, liver, but there is no carbs. Okay?
So in, in wine there is zero carbs. But it makes sugar go high. So? It makes sugar go high because it makes sugar. Yes, but there is a, uh, when, when uh, it is produced by grape, but there is a fermentation and, and the sugar is turned to alcohol. And no, 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 no. Alcohol is just calorie, the great number of calorie, not sugar in it. And that's why we are suggesting to eat a lot of food with alcohol, because what can alcohol do to you? Very, but why? Do you know why? Yes, because it inhibits your liver to produce carbohydrates and that's why you should have alcohol in moderation, which means not more than one to two alcohol units and with food. Because there is no, no carbohydrates in alcohol, just in beer and in sweet wines, not in dry wines and, and uh, brandies, whiskies, gin, etc. shots that you used to have, I'm sure. But you know how to drink if you if you are trying to drink. Okay, then is there any any sugar in in meat? We said no. Uh, in in bread, it is 15. In uh, in pasta, in that quantity, two, 200 grams to carbohydrate units. In salad, nothing. We said in salad dressing. Nothing, it is just oil and vinegar almost. And in this meal, we have how many? One, two, three, four, th one, two, three, uh, carbohydrate exchanging or 45 grams of carbs. And I think this is the final one. How many carbs we have in one cup of coffee, coffee with three spoons, three spoons of sugar? 12, exactly, 15, with milk, in salmon, in salmon, zero, in french fries, 150 grams, no, it's 15, you need around 15, uh, 150 grams is, is, is one uh, carbohydrate exchange, and in 200 grams cooked red cabbage, exactly, in 17 grapes, 10 to 17 grapes, how many? Yeah, great. And then if we count this, we have how many? One, two, three, four, four carbohydrate exchanges or 60 grams of carbohydrates. So thank you. Do you have any questions? Later on, that's why in your pumps you have a pizza bolus twice. So first time for the carbohydrates and the second time a little bit more for those carbs that are the, for, for, for proteins and fat, they, they, they will turn into carbs, but at least after two hours. And it is a very uh, big issue for discuss. Uh, whether we should count the carbohydrates in meat and we think that you should count if you get more than 200 grams of meat in one portion. That you can count at least one unit more. But it will be later on. Not immediately like uh, food with high uh, glycemic index or direct carbs. But I said 100 grams of pork. This is the usual, uh, uh, usual portion that you need. 100 to 150, at, at, I mean, for one meal. And that's why we are not, you do not have to count this as uh, one carbohydrate unit. Otherwise, if there is a bigger portion of meat, yes, you, you should count one unit more if there are more than 200 grams of meat in your meal. But not uh, 
Not at that moment, a little bit later on, after one hour maybe, two hours. Sorry? So it will be useful for pump uses more than the, the one with pens. Uh, uh, exactly. It is more uh, useful for those who are using pumps that you can make that uh, uh, a little bit later on to have uh, two, one or two units more. Yeah. Otherwise, it's very hard for, for you to, I mean, to add for every, every piece of meat another, another shot. Do you recommend any special formula to calculate the, uh, the glycemic effect of fat and protein? Because I read uh, very different strategies, and I think the, the more physiologist is one based on calories, but you need to transform the amount of fat and the amount uh, of protein in total calories and then divide in. Oh, in different hours, it depends the, the total amount, but it's very complicated to use in the real life. No, it's very complicated, and of course, uh, the fat and proteins and all ingredients are important regarding the calories. So it's quite different than this. You have to count calories in order to maintain your weight, but carbohydrates for immediate uh, no, but I, I, I mean because uh, if you go to the barbecue, you need to use insulin for protein, but yeah. uh, only if you uh, eat a lot of protein. Yeah. Um, when do you try to calculate the exactly bolus to this meal? Uh, there are different formulas. Very different formula uh -huh. and different opinion on that. Sure. Do you recommend any special? No. If you are having just a big amount of proteins and, and a little bit later on. So it's very difficult to achieve with basal bolus. That's why there is a different types of boluses in pumps because of that combinations. Like pizza, like something that contains a lot of... Uh, carbohydrates but a lot of proteins also but the general recommendation is that the proteins that you need a uh, uh, very little amount of proteins in total not more than 15 to 20 percent of uh, of total daily intake it should be from proteins of course that you you will alter this like all of us that we are doing that and that's why that should be like uh, exceptions and lo not like a general recommendations to do that all the time. But if you're doing, you can calculate approximately uh, the quantity of uh, proteins and then to add some one or two units a little bit later on, one hour after meal. Maybe we can also use a rapid insulin that starts 40 or 45 minutes later. Yes, yes, that, that, that's, the, that's my point, later on. Yeah, but at the same time, but the other type of insulin, not the ultra rapid? Uh, human insulin, they have uh, different peaks than yes. if you have, yes, that was... Because, uh, uh, I am from Argentina, for example, at night, the lantus doesn't cover up the night, so I use rapid, because it goes to bed, and when I eat something with fats or lots of proteins, I use that insulin because it starts working 45 minutes later that I inject it. It's a great uh, idea. I mean, you can always use the uh, human insulin because the uh, starting of the insulin a little bit uh, um, later than, than analogs and the peak is a little bit later and maybe they can cover uh, the meal which is with more with proteins and fat. Okay then. Who is more insulin sensitive, who is not? How, how can we decide if to use the formula with a 1,800 or 1,500? The, the, the difference is very small. For instance, if, if your total daily dose is higher than, for instance, 0 0.6 per kilogram, it means that you are 
a little bit insulin resistant, you need a higher dose of insulin because there is a, a, a people with type 1, they required less than 0.5 per kilo. I mean like an average dose and we are considering this the dose uh, like a more insulin sensitive. But the difference is very small and you, you uh, can, see, uh, can see that on, on my example for if that um, you need three insulin for those who are more insulin resistant, you will need 2.5 for those who are insulin sensitive. So usually you will calculate that from your average need for insulin per day. It is very similar. Even there is a rule of 1,700 for all. You will, you will find in literature very different ways, but these are the most used uh, formulas and that's why I, I, I was talking about them. So thank you so much again.